Hello and welcome to How to Film Weddings. My name is Nick Miller and today, I am sure you are on the edge of your seat. I am talking about something so exciting, so exhilarating that I'm sure that you just cannot get over the anticipation that you have for me to talk about legal paperwork. I'm, I'm sure that crickets are playing right now because people don't like legal paperwork, do they? My wife Jen and I with our wedding film business Wild Oak Films over the past five years have gotten to travel all over the United States filming weddings at destination, some local for them, but we went out there at incredible locations from California, Colorado, South Carolina, Washington. We've gotten to travel all over the place. Because of that destination work that has led us to be able to do uh, international destination work. In 2022, we shot a wedding in Mexico and as of recording, this video we have just gotten back from an amazing wedding in South Africa. And so in today's video I want to talk about how we were able to transport all of our gear to Mexico and to South Africa with no problems at all. We were able to get all of our stuff to Mexico and to South Africa because we used a carnet, which is basically a passport for your stuff. Now before I get into the nitty gritty of this video, there's a couple of things that I want to share with you. Number one, the website that I'm going to use, uh, atacarnet.com, uh, can issue carnets to US and UK citizens. If you live somewhere else in the world, you are going to need to find uh, your carnet equivalent in your country. The second thing that I want to let you all know is that the carnet is basically a passport for your stuff. Okay, we have had no trouble getting our stuff into these countries. However, you are going to need to look at the specific country that you are traveling to. You are going to need to look at their laws to see if something like a work visa or anything like that is necessary. So with the carnet, you are able to get your gear and your stuff through customs, but you still might need to mess with visas and all that. So with a carnet, uh, one, it is good for a year. So it's a passport for your stuff that is good for a year. And two, uh, both of the times we have done it, it has cost about $500. So I know it's not cheap to get the carnet, but it's good for a year and it really just gives me that peace of mind. One of the things that my wife actually makes fun of me about quite often is that whenever we travel, we're getting our gear onto an airplane, I am a stress ball. I know that you don't really need to get to the airport two hours ahead of time, especially with the rinky dink airport that we fly out of and we're TSA pre-check and all that kind of stuff. But I always get there early because I'm always stressed and I'm always worried that something is going to happen. And I have always felt that way, even with domestic travel, whenever I'm going from Wichita to California, Wichita to South Carolina or Georgia or wherever it is that it may take us. I am always a stress ball about that. But whenever you add that international flavor to it, where you are going to have to take your stuff through customs and you are worried, am I going to get caught? Are they going to confiscate my stuff? How much gear can I take? All those things. It is just a massive stressor inside of me. And so I wanted to protect myself by taking an extra step and get what is called a carnet. The website is atacarnet.com. So whenever you go over to their website, you have the option of you know creating your username and your password, which you are going to have to do eventually, um, and then you can fill out all of the information by yourself. One cool thing for the first carnet that we had whenever we went to Mexico was I actually hopped on the phone and I talked to their customer service and they did everything for me. I just gave them the information and they were very helpful in setting up the carnet. So if you're feeling unsure about this process and you don't know exactly what you should do or it makes you uncomfortable, Give them a call and they will help you out step by step through the entire process. So after you have created your account, you are going to want to open a new application. After you open up the new application, just go in and fill in your information. You're going to need stuff like name, address, your EIN number, um, you know, what, what kind of gear you're going to be transporting, you know, where it's going to be coming from, all of that sort of stuff. It's really straightforward and again, if you have any questions, you can call their customer service or there is a little chat that will pop up and they will answer your questions. The next thing that you are going to do is list the countries that you are traveling to. I would recommend getting the carnet after, that's right, after you have your travel itinerary set. 
Whenever we went to South Africa, we got a direct flight from Newark, New Jersey to Cape Town, South Africa. The reason is because every time you go through customs, you have to get your carnet signed. And I found actually cheaper flights uh, that didn't take too much longer, but it would go from the United States to France, and then France to Cape Town, or United States to Germany, Germany to Cape Town. And if I were to do that, then I would have had to have the carnet signed in Germany or France before getting to Cape Town and then once I got to Cape Town. So it was beneficial to me and to us to have that direct flight and pay a little bit more so that I wouldn't have to go through that headache. So when you get to this countries tab, you're gonna need to put all of the places that you will be traveling to with your stuff. Next is going to be your list of items and this is the tedious process. You need to take every single piece of gear that you have that you are taking to film your wedding, uh, your cameras, your lenses, your tripods, your mics, your stands, everything, and you are gonna have to list it on the sheet with the serial number. And putting the serial number is very, very important. The customer service agent that we worked with recommended creating an Excel sheet, putting all of the gear, all of the serial numbers, and then the value, you also have to list the value of your gear, um, in a Excel sheet and then save it. What you can do after you list all that is you can then upload it to their site. The reason that you need the name of the equipment and the serial number is when you get to customs, you are gonna hand them your carnet. And one of the things that they are going to do is look through it is they are going to pull the name of the gear and the serial number and ask you to pull out that gear and show it to them. The reason that this process is so important is they wanna make sure that you are not purchasing anything or smuggling anything uh, in or out of the country, okay? So they just wanna make sure that everything is legit. So it is very, very important that you have exactly all of the stuff that you are going to be taking with you. After this list is made, it cannot be changed. So if you are just thinking about taking it, you need to decide as you are filling out this part of the carnet, yes or no, I am going to take it. Then you are going to go and fill out the shipping, uh, where are they gonna send the carnet to, the payments and submission and all of that. Whenever we went through this process, it was incredible. I filled out our carnet um, before we went to South Africa. I talked to the lady on a Tuesday and by Wednesday afternoon, I had the carnet on my front porch mailed to me. It is a physical document that you have to have because whenever you go through customs, uh, they have to stamp it and sign it and you have to sign it and there's a whole long process to go through which I will talk about right now. So before you leave the United States, you need to go to a port authority, a customs agent in your city or where you are and take the carnet and take all this stuff and have them look over and sign it. So you have to sign it before you leave the country. Depending on where you're flying out of, uh, some bigger airports have those in the airport. Uh, where I live in Wichita, Kansas, it's not actually in the airport because it's not an international airport. So I had to find it in Wichita and get it signed. I got mine signed the day before we left uh, because that was just so much easier since I was checking my tripod bag and all of that kind of stuff. I couldn't pull that out very easily in uh, Newark, New Jersey, uh, where we flew actually to Cape Town too. So we got it signed in Wichita before we left. Then whenever you get to your final destination, as you, you know, they're checking your passports and you're going through customs and you take all your stuff, tell the customs agent that you have a carnet that needs signed. They should know what it is that you're talking about and they will do the same process. They will look at your gear list, you'll pull something out, you'll show them a few things, they will stamp it and they will sign it. Now, before you leave your country, you need to do the same process again. So before we left South Africa, we got there uh, about four hours before our plane took off. You need to get there really early. I would recommend at least three hours before your flight takes off. And then you're gonna have to find the custom agent, just talk to an information center, and they will point you to the customs agent. And then you go through the same process again, where they will look at your gear, they will ask you some questions, they will stamp it, you will sign it. And then whenever we got back to the United States, as we were going through the customs process, I, ha I told the guy that I had a carnet and he said, let me see it. And then we went to the customs agent and they filled it out and stamped it and signed it for me. It is very, very important. It, this is a legal document that it must be stamped and signed four times. One from the location that you live in, once you get to the destination, when you leave the destination, and then when you get back 
to your home country. There's a lot that goes into a carne, but the thing that it really gave me was a peace of mind. I knew that when I got to Mexico or I got to South Africa or the next time I use it, right, I knew that I would be okay and my stuff would not be confiscated. I wouldn't have to pay any taxes on it or anything like that because legally they could see that I was bringing the same stuff in and the same stuff out. So if you have any international destination weddings that are coming up for you in the next you know, few months or years, I highly, highly recommend looking into a carnet. It's a passport for your stuff. It's gonna you know, make your travel time a little bit longer, but that peace of mind is so, so worth it. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this information helpful, uh, let us know in the comments below. Another thing that I really want to push here for one quick second is our Facebook community. If you would like to be a part of that conversation and join the over 12,000 wedding filmmakers that we have in our Facebook group, click on this link right over here. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hopefully uh, this information about our carnet has been helpful. And until next time, we will see ya.